guys, thanks so much for coming. And um, before I start, I really want to um, thank Peter and Marge for inviting me to speak. And I'm super excited <laughs> to share my um, just like vision and my process. And also, my parents are here, so I want to thank my mom and my dad for supporting. <laughs> And my name is Heijin, and I live in Brooklyn. Um, I mostly work in my room. I used to have a studio, and I just like waking up and having all my materials in my room. And I like sort of work late, so I just like working and just going to bed. Um, and these are my materials. Um, I use watercolor, and that's what I use <laughs> and I just scan them and sometimes I use like Photoshop to like change the colors but um, recently I just want it to look more like originals and I've been lucky enough to use um, my favorite medium to get published at um, New York Times and other like magazines and newspapers and that's been like most of my illustration career but also, I try really hard to keep up with my personal work. And I've had like solo shows in Brooklyn, and I've been invited to do group shows. And I think my personal work really um, helped me to become a better illustrator. And I um, also do a lot of just like books. I just make books. I think it's just really natural for me. And um, comic form is very like personal and I think it's with the community is like very open-minded so whatever I draw they're just like amazing and they love it um, and also um, I sort of like making these like random music notes um, I always admired music and musicians but I was never good at singing so I just you know just draw them <laughs> and with my watercolor, um, sometimes my clients ask me to make animations, and um, I just like draw them in like separate like panels and just Photoshop them to make them move. Um, I use Lightbox to make like each frame, and it like sort of like sounds hard, but it's very fun and it's not that hard <laughs> for me. <laughs> but I I think when they move, they're like really interesting and just like different way of like seeing my work. And I also do sculptures. Um, sometimes I just get bored work, like looking at my work in like papers and these are made from like air dry clay and they dry in like one day and I just color them in watercolor and glaze them. And I'm also into fashion. <laughs> so I like I'm making like my art into like earrings or like tote bags. And that's just like a summary of like everything I do. And this is like my sketchbook and I hope you guys like my work. And um, when someone described my work, they, one person like said, oh, it's like very like psychedelic. And at first I was like very shocked because I'm very like sober when I do my work. And I like, so I'm like super focused but I kind of take it as a really good, like, great compliment because that just means my work is like something that like doesn't really belong here, and I just sort of like think it's like magical. Um, before I start my process, I would like to like talk about like my background. Um, I grew up in South Korea, and I moved here when I was 16, and. My South Korean elementary school made me do this like art journal every day, and it was just basically drawing what happened that day and writing about it. And this is one of my favorite drawing I made. It's me singing like karaoke, mm -hmm. and I was like pretty shy as a kid, but um, I think when I was drawing myself, I just like sort of like cheated and I put my hair really stylish and like I was wearing this like patterned dress and. I drew myself really big, and that sort of was like a joy of drawing for me to um, just, just like cheat <laughs> and um, just fantasize. 
Um, I also had a pretty intense like art education. Um, I went to this like art after school where um, my teacher was like a watercolor artist, and she was very warm and she was very talented at watercolor, and she sort of like taught me everything about colors and like what's like warm and what's cool. And I like still use her technique, and I remember what she um, like provided me. And every time I went to this like art school, they had this like picture of like Pablo Picasso, and I just grew up like liking this. And one of these quotes really like inspired me through like still today. And I know like everyone knows Pablo Picasso, but um, every act of creation is first an act of destruction. And this still like really like inspired me whenever I want to like try something new. Like I have to let go of something that I was like obsessed with before, and just to like keep exploring. And that's me in LA. I like really didn't like LA when I moved there. And to me, like I really wanted to move to New York. So I like wore this like I love New York T-shirt, and <laughs> I just dreamed about like being here. And I was really bored. Um, so I like started doing more art. I wanted to like stand out and my English wasn't that good. So like people would like ignore me a lot, but I wanted to make like a statement that I'm like cool and <laughs> I'm like different. So I just like like drawing things on like my like outfit and I made a portfolio that was sort of like like weird looking like high school stuff. And I got into school, I got into um, Ulaan School of Design. And in, at RISD, um, it was a very great school, um, but I sort of like was sort of like lost. And I really liked just like painting. So I took a lot of painting class and this is like big watercolor painting and it was just about how much I love eggs. <laughs> and, <laughs> and also I didn't want to be like behind, like a, a lot of my friends wanted to like do like visual development and I didn't really know what it was, but I also wanted to do it. So I just like took like advanced digital art class and sort of like made this like vector art looking things. And I like entered senior year with like sort of like mixed media, like digital and like watercolor plus like color pencil, just like scanned it in. And, wanted to make it look cool and I thought like my teachers would like really like it. But my one of my like editorial illustration teacher was like, oh your work is like boring and it's not magical enough. And that really like shocked me. And I think that like re that like comment made me like re-question like what are the things that I like and what medium I'm like open to and making digital art wasn't really like my natural talent. I was just trying to fit in. So like the next day I brought this like watercolor like hamburger assignment and this was um, in like editorial illustration class. It was like pick your like favorite um, article and the article was about how people open up more when they talk about food. So I just drew like a hamburger and I put like people inside the hamburger layers and this sort of like perspective was really new and I thought like I made like a really great thing. And that was sort of like my like portfolio. I had like my kind of like joke, like egg gator, elect gator, and just sort of like I like mixing things. And I graduated um, and I've been just like making more art. And I graduated like four years ago and past four years I have been still like developing and constantly improving my style and I think um, to break down my process I think these four um, steps are necessary for me. <laughs> um, first like having a weird vision and um, using like every color possible and being an emo and drawing <laughs> with love is very important. <laughs> So I would like to just like go through like every step. Like first having like a vision. I sort of like don't like sketching. Um, and all my process is very like spontaneous. And this is like a state of like a first, like just like normal state, like in my brain, just like a bunch of just like colors. And when I get like stimulated or like excited, I just sort of see like, like I just get like excited and like kind of like see oh, what I'm gonna draw. 
and it just becomes like clear, like maybe like a pattern or like it's just like established like the world. And here's my characters. <laughs> um, I think my characters, I definitely know where they're coming from. These are like animals, but I also add just like fun elements. Um, and with characters, I don't want to draw like same thing over and over. I like never was able to. Um, and there's a lot of like list of characters in my world. And this one, I really like it, so I named it my daughter. And um, <laughs> she's just like awesome. <laughs> and she has like really cool wings and really cool boots, I think. Um, and also like thinking about like her boyfriend or something. Um, yeah. <laughs> and when my characters like interact with each other, they become like sort of like a story. Um, I think the one in the lab, like a orange like monster thing, I was just like listening to Bjork and I just sort of like was thinking about like orange and just sort of like made this like monster looking thing. And the one with the bluish like things hanging around are like, I was just like thinking about TV and what if TV was a monster. And I'm like, just like watching TV and becoming like, like TV. Um, very like abstract ideas. <laughs> and after I draw like a bunch of characters, I just put them in the background, which is also, um, like there's no rules. Um, I just draw what it feels like it will like fit in in those like elements. And as I draw a background, like more characters pop up. Like the one with the red moon. Like I was never intended to like draw a moon, but I just ended up drawing like four more moons and shooting stars. And they're like some like characters like dancing. And yeah, that's that's when I feel like oh, this is like done. And a very important part of my process is colors. Um, because I use watercolor, I think I just like maybe just like think about colors a little bit more. Um, and I think there is like really like so many colors and my like biggest fear is not using all of them. And I just wanna use all of them. And sometimes like limited color palette is like a trend and I really struggle to like only use like red and blue. Like I can't understand that. Um, <laughs> and for me, like colors are also characters. Like whenever I meet someone, I sort of like distinguish them by colors. And for me, like the biggest color is like red and yellow and like green, maybe, and blue, I don't really like care. So I just put them in the corner. <laughs> and these are some like um, colors I use, like a lot of yellow, like red, some green, and like there's like so many yellows I wanna use and I don't even know like how to name all these yellows. And to just talk about like yellow again, <laughs> um, I think yellow for me is like the biggest happiness and it just like makes me really happy and it's like a base color for like every color I use. But sometimes also I get like bored of yellow so I like use yellow when I'm, I represent like happiness but also like sort of like mellow like sadness. And to me like yellow is like white, it's like a background color. And red, um, I just use to represent like the highest emotion I have. And whenever I feel like really strong, just want to put color red everywhere. And it also represents just like bad, like heartbroken or like death, like something really intense. And um, also being an emo is really important for me. Um, I think being an emo like is just like how you're like connected to yourself and how um, just like honestly you're drawing about what's going on with your life. And therefore I like most of the female characters I draw are they're all, all me. <laughs> and this one is from my childhood where um, this um, little boy in my school, he like called me like big stone head because I had like a big head. So I just like thought about that and drew that. And 
this one is just about like taking selfies. <laughs> and this one is me being like super naked in the house, like feeling really like comfortable in the house, but also feeling like limited. And this one was like a year after I moved to New York and I just felt like stuck in a box. So I like wrote about a girl who is just like, who built like a box to like hide and just like decided to like stay there. And this is like a map of like my mind. Like they are like very like sometimes like very well planned, but also very abstract. And this is like a sketchbook of me sort of feeling like poopy and like weather was bad. But I think when I draw my feelings, it really like exaggerates what I think and feel. So I think my drawing represents way more like deeper emotions than what I actually can like say this is how I feel. And I think I really put a lot of love to all of my work and my characters. Um, and I think whenever I draw, I have like a heart, like a tomato, it's like a tomato heart because it's just like really red and cute and very like full of love and it's very healthy. Like I want to like help people with my art. And also to like love means that I am super obsessed <laughs> and for example when I'm like upset with a boy I'll just draw it and draw over and over, draw more boys, <laughs> more <laughs> and I like just never get sick of it because I'm just drawing what I love and also I um, just love like simple things, I love my plants and it died and I was really sad so I made a comic about it and I felt like I'm like a plant killer. And my teeth really died, so I like I wanted to give you the best of the best, but it died. Um, I made I had had like a whole comic. It got published by Vice, and yeah, that was like my process. And now I'll talk about my work. With editorial work, it's like kind of tricky because I just explained I just love whatever I I just do, draw whatever I love, but with editorial like you have an assignment and this one was for a medium and it was about how like um, migraine and like exercise like works and I don't have any migraines I don't really exercise that much so I don't know what that means but um, I just drew like first just like sketches and this is what my sketches look like I draw them with pencil and sort of like scan them in or sometimes when I'm busy I just take a photo with my phone and just like Photoshop them. And I usually send them like color sketches because I don't want them to like, my art directors to like be really surprised of like this like surprise color I used. So I just like draw, I just like do like Photoshop color for sketches. And the first one um, is a woman exercising with like migraines as a character. And the second one is like a color like divided like half of the woman is like having a migraine because she's exercising but the other half is like having like a peaceful moment from exercising and the migraines are gone and the third one was inside like a brain pattern and there's all these like migraines and inside each migraine there's this character exercising it like sounds complex but to me like coming up with these concepts are like very fun and i just wanted to like keep like having fun with my commercial works too. And the art director like of course picked the last one. And this is sort of what it looks like in the final. And for another example for um, New York Times, um, I was like at, actually at my parents' house when they like emailed me. Every time they email me, I'm like at my parents' house doing nothing. Um, but I like they emailed me at like 3 a.m. Can you draw something about like cleaning? And there's a cleaning editor at New York Times who loves her job, and it's about cleaning. And I was like, okay. And <laughs> um, I just draw, again like sketch them in pencil. And the first one was this man looking at New York Times newspaper, and this woman is like organizing the newspaper. And the second one is again like a 
like a pack of newspapers and this woman is like cleaning. And the third one was all these like um, cleaning tools were becoming into a character and this woman was like enjoying with the characters. And they picked the third one. And this is what it looks like for the final. And I really like this one, <laughs> actually. Um, I like how the spray gun became, like I just put like an eye on it and it became a character. And also the vacuum. And the sponge, I like super like how the sponge turned out. <laughs> and this one was for WeTransfer. WeTransfer is like a website that just like transfer files. And they emailed me around like Christmas and they were like, oh, like, can you do this? Like buy the illustration in like, like three days. And I was like, okay. And it was like, they didn't really give me a lot of like details, but it was about how artists manage their time. So this was about time management. And the woman is just like juggling with like a bunch of like clocks and there's just like characters coming out and they're just like also juggling and like managing times. And this one is also sort of like same characters and they're just floating around time. And this one is when time goes like really slow, you're just like sleepy and just like falls around you. And for, for my personal work, I got asked a lot of like small press publishers for me to like draw something and they will like publish me. And this was a publisher called Perfectly Acceptable in Chicago. They do like a really good like risograph stuff. Um, and I just like, they were just like, oh, just draw whatever you want. And I was like, okay. And I was like really into candles that time and also songs, so I was just, like thought I'm just gonna make like a candle songs. And this is like a format of the book. It like sort of like folded into like four ways. And when you open it, it was like folded into two ways and just like opened like full like four ways. Um, and the first thing I did was just sort of like laying out the colors. Like, and I wanted like from like left to right to be like very contrasty. And um, I sort of like wrote the song names first, like Candle Cantata, something like that. <laughs> and um, I think this work really represents like who I am. It's very com like a complex version of me and just like my like what I'm like thinking. And it just shows like um, colors, like contrasting color and like music notes is there and these characters are like totally not realistic, but they're, they just like live in this like candle world. And like as like the candles like light up, like there's like more like hard butterflies like floating around. And when it like goes down, they're like going down. And when it's like fully like lit, it's like a house party and there's like festivals going on. And the other side is like, party is over, there's like bugs coming out. And yeah, like I think if you have a chance you can like look at it. <laughs> but it's like um, I like put a lot of like time into like making these images and like half of it I also don't know where these are coming from, but from like candles and songs, like two like simple um, words are just like inspiring enough for me to like come up with this like whole stories and pictures. And I made like a little like a character manual for if you want to like make a character like me and it might not work. <laughs> um, so first like just think simple, um, just like go to a world or think about the world that like you feel comfortable or the world, the place that you always wanted to go. And just keep thinking about it, get like obsessed about it and just keep dreaming and until like you're like in that world. And my world is sort of looks like this. <laughs> They're like, like flowers. I'm like comfortable around flowers. I like flowers. Um, and just like 
like add more and meet yourself there. That's me with super rainbow color and spend some good time with your characters, like have like quality time, like eat breakfast and love your character and your character will love you back too and keep dreaming. That's it. And this is a quote that I would like to share. It's a quote I got <laughs> from high school when I was like really miserable and didn't want to do art, but I went to a Chinese restaurant and they had this amazing fortune cookie. You have a talent for all that is artistic. Thank you.